Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at Roxanne Starfall's event. This 5 mana for 3, when it enters or attacks, it gets to generate a tapped meteorite token, which is actually a real magic card, now just a token version of it, that uh, gets to make a man of any color, and when it enters deals 2 damage to any target. And for as long as we control Roxanne, whenever we tap an artifact token for mana, so that's very specific, and 1 mana of any type that artifact token produced, so it's synergized with the meteorite tokens as well as with treasure tokens for instance which will now generate two mana as opposed to one so we're gonna try to play roxanne ahead of schedule and then those meteorite tokens will help us generate even more mana to redeploy roxanne if it gets answered or to keep casting more expensive spells afterwards so i've split up the deck into a few different categories the main one is going to be the mana acceleration to quickly get a roxanne on the board then we also have some treasure generators which are good at ramping and then further synergy Energize with Roxanne's ability. Then we've got a pretty large category dedicated to effects to give a Roxanne haste, because if we can play Roxanne and immediately attack with it, we get to generate two meteorite tokens in one turn, deal four damage, and then have more mana on the following turn. So those are all great. And then we've got a group of cards that synergize with Roxanne or with the meteorite tokens, maybe doubling the amount of meteorites we generate or doubling the damage we can deal with the meteorite tokens in the first place. Then we've got some other removal spells to round out the deck as well as answers to artifacts and enchantments. And then we've got our curve toppers, which we're hoping to ramp into using the meteorites. And some of these also benefit from having haste, so they also work well with our other haste enablers, so they can immediately get their abilities going. And then our miscellaneous section has some more cards to maybe protect our commander or to mess with the opponent's mana base. Bloodbraid Elf is also fun to have. So that's kind of our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration, as many one-drop accelerants as we can get our hands on, so our Boreal Grazer and Kami to put an extra land in play, Halfling, Elvish Mystic and Blender Elves to tap for mana, and Utopia Sprawl to enchant a forest to generate additional mana as well. Then at 2 mana there's Explore to draw a card and play an extra land. Fanatic of Veronas can potentially make 4 mana if we control a 4-powered creature, so it's perfect alongside Roxanne, and we can also eternalize it out of the grid graveyard to make a 4-4 version of it. There's Lotus Cobra to synergize with a landfall, and we've got lots of fetch lands in the mana base to work well with Lotus Cobra and other landfall creatures. Wolf Hollow Haven can enchant a land, which can then immediately tap for 2 mana, so it's kind of like a mana creature that has haste. Then there's the Anarchomancer to discount our red and green spells by 1. Ruby can also immediately tap for mana, similar to an Arcane Signet, but Ruby can also attack and block. Then there's Cultivate to get 2 basics. Then Nissa is similar to Lotus Cobra, but can also find additional elves or elementals with the ability, and those elementals also include Fury, which we can potentially cast for free by pitching a red card from our hand to deal 4 damage divided as we choose among opposing creatures, so that can be a nice early removal spell against green decks especially. And then a Flare of Cultivation, perfect alongside our Kami or Grazer to get 2 extra basics. And then a Domri can also make our creatures uncounterable with the mana ability, as well as pumping them up and giving us a fight ability on top. And then our Treasure Makers include a Ragavan at 1 mana, awesome if we can get that going. We've got Captain Lannery making treasure when it attacks, same as the uh, Shaman token from Fable of the Mirror Breaker, this one just doesn't have haste. And then there's the Professional Facebreaker, giving us treasure if we hit the opponent. Then Tireless Provisioner, making treasure with Landfall. Big Score can discard, draw two, and make two treasures. Goldspan Dragon is one of the few five drops in the deck, but it does synergize quite well with our treasure tokens, as it can now tap for two mana, and we get to make one whenever we attack, or Goldspan becomes a target of a spell. And then Gold Vein Hydra is a decent mana sink with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste, and if it dies it leaves behind a bunch of treasure. And then to enable haste, we have some lands as well. Arena of Glory, definitely the best one, since it doesn't require any additional mana. The Battlements needs to tap alongside a red mana, so it's a bit more pricey. Then we've got a Dowsing Device, which synergizes with the Meteorite tokens from Roxanne to give haste. Then we've got the Boots to give Hexproof and haste for one more mana to equip. Stormseeker can give a creature one extra power and haste each turn. Rising of the Day gives all our creatures haste and legends one extra power. And then Rhythm also makes our stuff uncounterable, and we can choose between haste or a plus one counter with Riot. And then the partners can also give haste and additional plus one counters to one of our creatures. And then the fun cards to synergize with Roxanne include Isika's Chariot to copy the meteorite token when the chariot attacks. Parallel Lives can double the tokens we get. 
Helm of the Host can make additional non-legendary copies of Roxanne, which can also get out of hand. Panharmonicon might be the best one here, since it not only triggers Roxanne's Enter the Battlefield ability, but now the Meteorite token itself also doubles its trigger, so it gets to deal 4 damage as opposed to 2. Roaming Throne also great at doubling Roxanne's trigger, which also includes the attack trigger. And then we've got Virtue of Courage as an early removal spell, but more importantly, the enchantment lets us draw additional cards when a Meteorite hits the opponent in the face. And then a Fiery Emancipation triples our damage output, so now a Meteorite can deal 6 damage and our creatures are also much deadlier. And then our removal includes a Lightning Bolt, as well as Fury, which we can cast for free, as we mentioned. And then a Shatter Skull Smashing can also be played as a land, and Spiteful Banditry can also be a powerful sweeper, leaving behind treasures. And then we've got some answers to artifacts and enchantments with Reclamation Sage and Force of Vigor, which we can also potentially cast for free. And then our curve toppers include more ways to generate treasure with Ancient Copper Dragon as well as Old Gnawbone, so these definitely benefit from haste. Then we've got the two Titans, Inferno Titan to deal damage, Primeval Titan to get additional lands, so we'll often go after the Arena of Glory. And then we've got the two Coglas to fight opposing creatures when they enter or maybe deal with artifacts and enchantments. Balefire Dragon also great with haste as it can maybe hit the opponent and wrath their board. Itali Primal Conqueror, always a powerful curve topper. Got Dracoseth, which can also maybe attack right away if we can give it haste to decimate the opponent's board, and Voltborn Tyrant to draw additional cards and gain life. And then the Great Henge is also pretty nice with a four-powered commander, so we can discount it and then draw additional cards. And then we've got a Once Upon a Time to help find those early accelerants in our opening hands, the Bodyguard to make our commander indestructible. Blood Moon can punish greedy mana bases, and we've got plenty of fetch lands to get to his forests so that it doesn't really hurt us too much. And then Blood Braid Elf can cascade into one of the cheaper cards in our deck, so it can also be fun. And then the rest of our mana base has some more utility lands here with the two channel lands. Castle Garenbrig, especially good at casting our Primeval Titan and other green curve toppers. And then a Shifting Woodland can be a little tricky to enable since we're not the best at enabling Delirium, but once we do it can also maybe copy something that's in our graveyard. And then lots of dual lands for mana fixing, including Stomping Ground, as well as Commercial District if we want to surveil, and Cinder Glade, another mountain forest we can potentially fetch for, alongside as many fetch lands as we can get our hands on to enable a landfall twice as well. And then we also have Cavern of souls to make our commander uncounterable. So between Cavern, Halfling, Domri, and Rhythm of the Wild, we have quite a few ways to make our creatures uncounterable. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Sauron the Dark Lord, so a pretty committed control deck. Our hand's got some powerful cards in it, admittedly. Turn 1 Mystic, maybe setting up turn 2 Facebreaker, and then Panharmonicon is excellent with Primeval Titan if we can resolve it. But that could be a problem if our opponent's got a bunch of counter spells. We don't get those ETB effects to begin with, and that's one of the best ways to counteract the uh, power of our commander. So, turn to Facebreaker. At the very least, can start generating treasure. And Utopia's Prowl, we want to enchant our stomping ground here. Could immediately cast it. Could technically also attack and then uh, cast Roxanne, second main, but I probably wanted to uh, play Panharmonicon first. So I guess to do this correctly, I don't tap the Elvish Mystic yet, in case they counter Utopia Sprawl. And this can name green, and then cast Panharmonicon. opponent does have a response. It's gonna be counter spell. Okay. So glad we didn't try Roxanne. And then we're maybe setting up for Primeval Titan here. Opponent taps out for Celestus. Could still maybe cast a wash away to counter my commander. But they shouldn't have an answer to Primeval Titan, and then once we get Titan down, it's going to be easy to deploy the rest of my spells. Get an Arena of Glory, and could get a Castle. Is that the best we have left? Shifting Woodland, also an option. Yeah, let's get the Woodlands, even though we don't have Delirium enabled yet. Let's 
So we're very far ahead of mana, which means that now if Roxanne gets countered, it's not a disaster since we can possibly replay it. Right, Crux of Fate to wipe the board. And now I could play a hasty Dracoseth. Although there's nothing to take out except for my opponent's life total. Could uh, play hasty Roxanne. Now I can't regret not getting a second haste land. So let's see, if I play Roxanne, do we have enough mana to play Dracoseth as well? Because then the treasures would make two mana. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I guess we can do both. So that works. Just get a untapped land here. Can make it Cinder Glade. And then use Arena. And Hasty Dracoseth. Smash. Four damage to the opponents. Okay. And our opponent's got two creatures they need to deal with that are both potentially lethal. We're one type away from Delirium. Sweltering Suns for starters. Back to the command zone. Opponent's at one, so now Roxanne's lethal. And Fable's not gonna cut it here. Alright, so... Got the job done. GG's. Guess we can play Roxanne to close it out, but our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Cody, so a five-color control deck usually. Our hand's a little clunky, with no red mana either, so take a mulligan. This one's also kind of on the clunky side, with no acceleration. A few too many curve toppers. Fury's nice, since we can pitch one of the red cards that we're not going to cast. But I still need a little bit of a ramp, or at least more lanes. Alright, turn one Ragavan is worth a shot. And then maybe get rid of Cinder Glade. We'll get a stomping ground. And if we get to connect next turn, can play Rhythm to make future creatures uncounterable. No opponents got the Blood Chief's Thirst. Okay, so no fun allowed. So next turn try Rhythm, and then we still have Cavern. Conundrum punishes me for my fetch lands and any other ramp effects. So interestingly, could try Provisioner. If they don't take it out, we play Roxanne next turn. Or we can resolve Rhythm to ensure all my creatures resolve in the future. Close call. Yeah, let's go with Rhythm. That way the partners could also enter with an extra counter potentially, which then gives other creatures more counters. Opponent resolves Cody. So, for now, just play partners. As a 3-4. Opponent activates Cody. And Shieldress Edict, a decent answer to the partners. And our opponent found a duress, at least that one's gonna miss. So we can play a hasty Roxanne thanks to the arena. Or we can give it haste with the rhythm. That way I don't have to tap the arena. Uh, maybe it is still worth it to get up to 4 toughness. So we'll use the arena. Play Roxanne, it is uncounterable. And it has haste from the arena, so we can deal two to Cody and then once more when we attack. So Cody down, Poden takes five. And now we've got a lot of mana for next turn, so not too concerned about the tapped arena. A rhythm can still give haste if we top deck something expensive. Opponent with the appropriation. So back to the command zone, which means that they don't get to cast it with the appropriation. So, yeah, not the best card in Brawl if you target the opponent's commander. 
So I'm a little bit short of casting Roxanne now, I guess, is the drawback of uh, having used the arena last turn. But that's all right. I'll just go Haven into Provisioner and keep up Lightning Bolts. All right, opponent actually has the Stone Rain. So it takes out two of my mana sources. So we might be a little short of replaying Roxanne now. Yeah, Bodyguard. Just play Bodyguard, can give it haste with the Rhythm. And keep the arena available. And hit for six. So we're almost getting there without Roxanne. Chandra, okay. So that can wipe my board. And then Bodyguard's Sacrifice only protects Legendary, so that doesn't help. We can at least finish off Chandra with a Lightning Bolt here. So do we need to bolt our opponents? If I get to replay Roxanne with a plus one counter and with haste, plus two more meteorites, one from entering, one from attacking, that's nine damage. So we're free to bolt Chandra without missing out on a kill if we top deck an untapped land. Nice Elvish Mystic doesn't quite do it. So plus one counter or haste. I guess we'll go for haste and attack for one. But now we might have enough mana for Roxanne. Opponent's gonna draw a bunch. But they'll need a one mana interactive spell. Or I guess a free spell. There's a few of those now in the format. Ancient Copper Dragon would be a fun way to end it as well. But let's go with Roxanne. Gets a plus one counter since it already has haste. Attack and two more damage will do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Hanadu. So we do need a particularly good hand to have a chance here. Is Ruby into Bloodbraid into maybe a Roxanne good enough? The rest of my hand leaves a lot to be desired. Also, using Roxanne to take out the opponent stuff with Nado in play, not the best plan since I get a bunch of triggers. So... Let's try something a little different. All right. Kami setting up turn two rhythm, which can then give Roxanne haste. Our opponent taking an awful lot of mulligans here. And then Balefire Dragon, if it connects, can be a decent answer to the opponent's board. Our opponent does have the turn one elf. So we can play a Rhythm. And then I'll still have to wait a turn on the Roxanne, but we can cultivate in the meantime. Pickaxe will target Nadu, triggering it. But it's got another Elf in hand, plus a land. But they are now empty-handed, so moving the Pickaxe is 3 mana. Fanatic the draw, so I can play that with haste, thanks to Rhythm, and then still cast Cultivate. And get a couple mountains. And I guess we may as well hit for one. So next turn, I guess we could even go for Balefire Dragon, and then if our opponent doesn't have a flyer back on defense, we get to decimate their board. Opponent re-equipped Pickaxe to Nadu just to get to trigger it, and found a cheaper equipment, Injector. So now they can potentially go off a bunch, pumping Nadu with every landfall trigger. So yeah, we could potentially die if they 
keep hitting more lanes. Although at some point I need to play another creature they can start equipping. Since they only get two triggers per creature. Opponent found the boots and other equipment, that doesn't matter. And then compelling the turns, which they don't get to keep up. So yeah, how about a Balefire Dragon? With haste, thank you very much. And attack. So we get to wipe their board. Now they do get to replay Nadu, and then they still have the equipment to go off. And they can even give haste with their own boots, so... We're not out of the woods yet. We'll see if they keep up their bounce spell here for the dragon. Would make sense. Alright, so the opponent's plan is to bounce the dragon before it gets to attack or before it uh, connects. What do we want to do in the meantime? Fanatic does tap for 4 mana, so that's nice. Can make a large gold vein hydra, or I could go roaming throne into Roxanne. That also sounds appealing. Roaming Throne with Haste. Naming Druid. This can name Druid as well. And then if we use Castle, can play Roxanne and then still play Hydra. This will trigger twice, thanks to Roaming Throne. So I could try and go after Nado here. Although they will get to trigger Nado in the process, potentially finding a protection spell. Um, if I just go face, presuming our opponent still bounces Balefire Dragon, play a Hydra, attack all out, get two more Roxanne triggers, then how much damage are we talking? 8 plus 8, 16. Yeah, I think going face is fine. So we don't trigger Nadu. So this is X equals 2. Already has haste, so we can give it a plus 1 counter instead. And then I guess Rhythm also makes our stuff uncounterable, so it's not like Cavern changed much. Their opponent can bounce Balefire Dragon. And then they'll have to jump to survive, or I guess trade for Roxanne. And then still take 8, so they fall to 1 here, I believe. Alright, opponent's got a different line. Jumping with Nadu and then bouncing Roxanne, that's fine. So opponent still falls to one, but now we get to replay Roxanne as opposed to replaying the dragon. So this feels a bit better to me. All right, and we'll see what they can come up with. And now the triggers finds a rot priest and hits us for four, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, ended up being a very close game, despite our opponent mulliganing that much. So it goes to show that Nado is still a very scary card. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Marchesa. So Grixis, kind of a control deck with lots of targeted removal and discard. Our hand is lacking a little bit of mana, but I guess Flare of Cultivation plus Kami is the perfect start. So I'm still gonna try it. And hope they can take my Kami away from me. So play Kami, put in Castle, and then a free Flare of Cultivation. And get Forest and Mountain. And 
Okay. And then next turn I'll have to decide if we try Panharmonicon first. Or maybe set up Captain Landry so we're guaranteed 5 mana. At least all my cards in hand are pretty impactful and I can cast them with just 4 lands. So if they have a discard spell it's not a big deal. It's gonna be a Grim Lavamancer. And we drew a Cultivate. So I could always decide to Cultivate here. If I play Captain Lannery and have one mana removal, I might regret it. So Cultivate's maybe the better play for now. Alright, Spell Pierce. I'm surprised they didn't have it last turn. Because it would have been able to counter the Flare of Cultivation, so maybe they just top decked it for turn, since I didn't really have it on my radar. Opponent now brainstorming. Do they have a fetch line to go with it? And then Grim Lavamancer can also activate here to take out Lannery. But they don't have the mana left to activate it. Okay. A relic still a way for them to commit crimes each turn. So it pairs well with uh, Marchesa. And Blood Moon. Wow. Yeah, that seems worth casting. I cannot quite go Captain Lannery into Blood Moon, but uh, we still have a forest, which is all we really need here. And then sure, they can activate Grim Lavamancer, but they may not be able to cast much else. So don't need to worry about counter spells anymore. Opponent drawing with a relic, hoping to maybe find an island or a swamp. Although they've already played land for turn. Alright, so if I play Captain Lannery, there's still a chance they can burn it. Uh, less likely to happen with, let's say, Nisika's Chariot or Panharmonicon. Don't have land 5 for Roxanne yet. Although Panharmonicon first into Chariot could also be fun. Although if they have like an abrade to destroy my artifact, I might be a little sad. Opponent's got nothing. And they're not gonna get rid of my enchantment with only red mana. And yeah, Blood Moon claims another victim. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tamyo, Inquisitive Student. So a deck that's gonna be packing a lot of counter spells. So we need to be off to a particularly fast start or have an uncounterable effect, which this hand doesn't really provide. I will say Cascade's nice against counter spells, because you still get the Cascade trigger even if they counter the Bloodbraid Elf, but this hand feels a little too slow. Okay, this I can try. And we have Cavern, naming Druid to make Roxanne uncounterable, so this hand is almost perfect. And then, don't need to show them Cavern yet. And I also want to hold the Verdant until uh, after we play Nissa, perhaps. So if I play the Cavern now, the Jig is up, our opponent's not going to be keeping up counter spells in the future necessarily. Although I guess if we name Druids, it only makes Roxanne uncounterable and not Nissa. So maybe it's not a bad thing if they don't keep up a counter here. And then for now play the Signet, so next turn I can go Nissa into fetch land and maybe play a dousing device. So we'll see if they keep up two mana. Nope, opponent's casting chart of course, which will transform Tamiyo right away. So that is still pretty scary. But we get to have a nice turn with Nissa, And then can just fetch for a forest, I guess. Although a tap land's fine too, unless we draw into one mana elf with Nissa's ability. And then probably don't need to keep Fabled Passage, although it's not a bad card to have. Found Reclamation Sage. And play Dowsing Device. So we can immediately attack Tamiyo. 
Not quite enough to take it out, but sets up our Roxanne nicely. And that one will be uncounterable thanks to Cavern. Opponents go to an Uro. And then go ahead and play Roxanne. Making sure to use our Cavern of Souls. And then Dowsing Device gives Roxanne haste. Meteorite could go after the opponent, or we could still go after Tamyo, so Nissa can attack her. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the energy deck. Our hands got potential. We'll need to fetch Stomping Ground to play turn 1 Utopia Sprawl. So there's always the risk that our opponents get away to mess with our non-basic land. Usually prefer enchanting a basic, but in this case... This is my only option if I want a Utopia Sprawl on turn 1. And we can name probably green. Turn to Fanatic. And then maybe turn three Roxanne. If we play Chariot, this can tap for four mana as well. So if they all of a sudden present some artifacts and enchantments, we could curve Chariots into Force of Vigor. Instead, Reflector Mage, that's annoying, so now we don't get to play Roxanne after all. We can still play the Chariots. Or Provisioner, and then make a treasure. I think I still prefer Chariot since our opponents, I guess, can use the Genius to um, make a copy of Reflector Mage, bounce the cat, but then I could Crew Chariot to block, and then, yeah, we should still be fine. And then Roxanne crews the Chariot itself to copy the Meteorite. Although 4 damage not enough to take out the Genius, can still deal with the Reflector Mage itself. So yeah, it's gonna be an interesting battle. Maybe they've got an answer for my vehicle here. Can also maybe copy the Treasures from Provisioner, if Roxanne doesn't work out. Opponent's just gonna sit on 4 mana. Alright, so they might have some Counterspell. In which case, Provisioner into Fanatic of Ronas looks good. Opponent counters. And then attacking with a Chariot is an option to copy a cat, a little risky in the face of open mana. So I think I'll just pass. The extra cat's not going to make a huge difference. Alright, opponent had a Brazen Borrower, as it turns out, so could have bounced the Chariot, bouncing the Cat instead. So now I cannot crew Chariot anymore. So if they get Reflector Mage copied with the Genius, they can bounce my Fanatic again. Or the Cat makes sense too. Although now playing Roxanne means I get to uh, make 4 mana with Fanatic. So yeah, now I can actually still play the partners if we tap carefully. So play Roxanne. Crew Chariots. I guess Roxanne itself is already enough to um, enable the Fanatic. Play partners. And then I can either give Roxanne haste with partners, or we can crew the chariots and put some more counters onto that. I guess crewing is fine. Might be harder for the opponent to interact with the chariots. And then we get to copy the meteorite to finish off Reflector Mage. Alright. And next turn, maybe play a hasty Dracoseth to decimate their board. Opponent bringing back Reflector Mage. So they get to bounce two of my creatures once again. Nothing to force a Vigor. 
So I can play Dracoseth, but it's going to be without haste. Reflector Mage says to his owner's hand, cannot cast spells with the same name. So that also includes the command zone, just double checking. All right, yeah. Reflector Mage plus the Genius is a pretty obnoxious combo, as we can't really keep anything on the battlefield. But uh, I guess play Dracoseth to Crew Chariot now, assuming it resolves. At least next turn we can cast some of our creatures and they'll have haste as well. And then Fnatic, I can keep available for Force of Vigor, as opposed to attacking for an extra damage. Put on chumps. Is this a flicker effect? Ephemerates? Yep. Alright, so what are we bouncing now? Chariot or Dracoseth? Or Fnatic, I guess. So yeah, there's nothing for me to force. They're gonna get to bounce Dracoseth. And then next turn I guess we'll have enough mana for Roxanne plus partners. I'm somewhat surprised it didn't wait on Ephemerate to bounce partners or some other creature to prevent the haste. But maybe they've got some other flicker effect that they're ready. We're also falling pretty low on life. So if they have another counter spell, we're probably just dead. Alright, so... How do we want to sequence? Roxanne enables the meteorites to make more mana, so that's kind of a logical starting point. Opponent with Avon Interrupter. Yep. So I wouldn't be able to replay Roxanne. Can still play partners. And then play Fnatic. Go full control here, so this gets two counters. Now I could crew chariots, although I'm probably still dead here. Attack, take out the Avon Interrupter with the meteorites. But they have uh, a lethal on the board. And if I stay back, then they just copy Reflector Mage again. So that wouldn't have done it. Yeah, that's one annoying card to get played against you five or six times in a row. And turns out Force of Vigor never found a target, otherwise we might have had a chance. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Darigas Shivan Champion. So definitely have a keep. Question is whether to play Verdant to fetch for Commercial District turn 1. I think I do. Since I kind of want to look for either a Haste Enabler or maybe a 1-drop I can cast alongside Arcane Signet. Which would maybe allow me to cast Roxanne on turn 3 already. Opponent surveils. But still curving chariots into Roxanne is pretty nice, as the chariot can also copy the meteorite token. So just a few tank plans from our opponent. Get commercial district to surveil. And Haven. Not quite what I'm looking for. Since it's not a one mana accelerant. Did find our haste enabler. And Stormseeker into Chariot used to be a thing in standard that was pretty fun. So we could try to reenact it, put on just with a cultivate. Now Dargas is a 5-5, so it does kind of get in the way of my creatures, but a 5-powered Roxanne, thanks to Stormseeker, could still get there. 
or as we said we can go for chariots and then chariot attacks copying the meteorite so they can't easily block with Darigas, that's still an option. And that also sets up our Great Henge a bit better. Yeah, this is just more mana efficient, so when in doubt. So there's Darigas. So at the beginning of the end step, they get a random card here. Okay. So we get to play a Roxane. And then if I send both damages from Meteorite on Darigas, the cats can also attack. So may as well. And we'll see if they trade. They do. I guess the copy enters untapped, so if we had a 2-drop we still could have cast it. Going to go Chandra to maybe answer Roxanne. But we still got our extra mana out of it, which is why Roxanne is such a powerful commander. Okay. So a few ways we can go about it here. Maybe wait on Great Henge until we get a bigger discount. If I play Roxanne, I'll still have two mana left, which is a little bit short of playing the Great Henge. Could go with some haste creatures as well. I guess if I go Great Henge, I can still play Lannery or Stormseeker. Maybe start with Lannery and then save Stormseeker to go alongside Roxanne in the same turn. And then could send an extra cat at Chandra just to be safe. Did not seem like they had like a fatal push in hand. So I'll just go face. And then now we've got our powerful Great Henge going. With more creatures coming up to draw. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Overlord. So often a sacrifice deck looking to cast Awaken the Blood Avatar. So our hands got some mana accelerants. Awkwardly have to fetch to get a green for Cobra, so then we don't have the fetch land available unless we draw a green source in the meantime. But uh, yeah, it's still got potential. Maybe just play the Arena first, and then if we draw a green source we can play Ruby. And wait on Lotus Cobra. Otherwise I could fetch my Surveil land on turn 1. Opponent with a Gorehound. So can expect the opponent to make some tokens as well. Blood Moon means I want to be able to get a uh, Forest in play as soon as possible. And Scalding Turn does not get Forest. But also not the most effective card in this matchup since our opponent already uses red mana for the Blood Avatar. And they already found a Swamp, so... Not gonna make it a priority to cast Blood Moon. Alright, found a Forest, so... I think we go Ruby first. In case they have removal. And then next turn I can play Cobra, play Fetch Lane, and still cast something that costs more mana. So go Cobra. Make a mana. And then if I get an untapped land, I can... Um, Potentially still cast a Phase Breaker and attack with Ruby, so that can also make an extra treasure, which seems worthwhile. Suppose we also maybe could have used the Arena to give the Phase Breaker haste, uh, so we had some options. But now we're setting up for Roxane, which can take out the Gorehound. Gorehound attacks, I'll take two since I don't want to double block and lose Cobra. And we'll see if they keep up instant speed removal for Roxane. 
because then I may not want to give it haste with the arena. Alright, opponent's got a board wipe, Toxic Deluge for three. That happens, not going to use the face breaker. But I still have the mana to play a hasty Roxanne. Which seems worth it, because it sort of pays for itself with the extra Meteorite. These just go face. So not a bad outcome for us. But uh, opponent still felt forced to cast a Sweeper, otherwise we could have gone off even more. But now Fiery Emancipation's looking good. Although never mind, opponent's got a Fury to take out Roxanne. So back to the command zone. These now only make one mana. So I can cast the Emancipation and let Giggs hit me, and that way Roxanne next turn deals 4 damage when it enters, or I can just clear Giggs so they don't draw any cards. I think I still like the Emancipation here. And then Arena's untapped again, so we can give Roxanne haste. So they have to keep up removal, and then uh, we still have other options available. So any source that deals damage to a permanent or a player deals triple the damage. So smashing can also clear creatures more easily now. Our opponent with a jumper getting some extra lines going. Nice. And then a zealot draws a card. But yeah, we can play Hasty Roxanne. It's gonna use up all my mana. I suppose I could have just won the game here had I cleared their two blockers, since Roxanne also triples the damage. But we'll let them jump and play an extra turn, I guess. Because if they take it, they die. Yeah, it's easy to forget how much damage you can deal with Emancipation on the battlefield. And if they somehow answer Roxanne, I guess if they awaken the Blood Avatar, that's 8 mana. So they won't be able to cast it if they have to chump here. So that's not really a concern. So opponent has to chump, top deck a removal spell. And then Roxanne costs 9 mana. So with Smashing as a land we can still play it. And then a Meteorite would deal 6, so it's not quite lethal. But yeah, had we just cleared the two untapped creatures, so Roxanne hits for 12 and that's game. So got a little bit too excited to take out Gix. Alright, looks like her opponent may have disconnected after all. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gonti, a Lord of Luxury. So the opponent's gonna steal our cards. Our hand's a little clunky, you know, red mana. So let's try again. Guess we'll keep this. Still not ideal. No fetch land to go with the Provisioner either. So they have time to just kind of answer my stuff one for one. Now Domri might be a better play since it's more likely to survive. Ooh, Dark Rituals. So turn to Gonti maybe? Nope. Solemn. So that can help them ramp. So they can play Gonti next turn. And now they also have something to maybe pressure my Planeswalker. Still kind of like the idea of Domri, so that can set up Roxanne next turn, assuming it survives. And then Roxanne can answer the Solemn, perhaps. I would love to get Roaming Throne in play before playing Roxanne, but we may not have the time to set that up. Ooh, March for two. Okay, damaging my Planeswalker. Don't see that too often in black. So maybe now I have time to play Roaming Throne first. And then next turn, double Roxanne. If I go Provisioner, play a land, it's still only two mana left over. Stormseeker for haste, also an option, but at least Roaming Throne's a little harder for the opponent to remove. Thanks to the ward. And then we'll name Druid, since I don't have any other cats in my deck. Do have a couple elves, but I don't think they'll benefit too much from Roaming Throne. Opponent's got a perfect answer though, with Liliana using the minus two. 
gets around Ward. So yeah, this game's not going to plan. Maybe next turn can still, I guess, play Roxanne to finish off Liliana. Or we could go Provisioner, play a land, play Stormseeker to attack it. But uh, now, especially with Primeval Titan, if I just play Roxanne, that sets up Titan for next turn. And then I'll have plenty of mana to overpower the opponents. So, Roxanne down, that's fine. And then Titan can get the Arena of Glory to give creatures haste in the future. So that seems good to me. So get the Arena, and then yeah, I can check my graveyard already of Planeswalker creature artifact, so getting Shifting Woodland could also maybe allow me to copy the Roaming Throne in a future turn onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Felia, the Flicker deck. Could use some cheaper mana acceleration, the sand's a little slow. Maybe on the play, Partners into Roxanne is good enough, but on the draw, probably not so much. Alright, this hand could work. We've got Ragavan and multiple ways to clear a path. Even at instant speed, if they flash in Felia to trade, we can bolt. So let's go to attackers. And we get to connect. Hitting a pack leader. Sure, we can cast it. Although I would have to use my treasure. Nah, actually, let's just pass. Keep a bolt for Felia, which I imagine they're casting here. And can take it out right away, or can wait for them to untap, although there's a risk of a protection spell. Or another flicker effect, so... Just keep it simple. Now a bounty agent can trade for Ragavan, although this Fury is now looking pretty decent. Fury clear both creatures, attack, and then we can still play Roxanne afterwards. Although I will be empty-handed since I have to pitch the Emancipation here. But so it goes. Ragavan attacks. And a Thraben Inspector, we're gonna skip to cast Roxanne. And our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, I mean, turn 3 Roxanne is pretty decent. Although, as it turns out, our hand wasn't particularly exciting. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Taisa of the Ghost Council, one of the better new commanders out there. But we have a very explosive hand with multiple 1 mana accelerants. Missing some curve toppers, perhaps, but we can try and surveil into one. And then what to play on turn one? Probably the Grazer. And then Utopia Sprawl can make extra mana next turn already. Flare of Cultivation. I mean, that's even more ramp to go with the Grazer. Might be overkill. Yeah, it seems a bit unnecessary. Although it is still somewhat tempting. But I guess a reach creature can also block their spirits. Ooh, Fable, that's a good draw. So let me play Utopia Sprawl. Naming red is fine. And then play Fable. And then now I can still play Roxanne by playing a land. If the Shaman survives, I could even discard my land. Now I probably don't need Halfling. And found a Fury, which is also good to just cast. So let me start by attacking. And then play Roxanne. If they take it out, it pretty much pays for itself. Ooh, Reprieve. Alright, that works. So they get to slow me down a little bit. Otherwise I could have even played Fanatic with the leftover treasure. 
So your opponent successfully found a way to prevent Roxanne from hitting the battlefield. And now a Skankle Evaporation going after my enchantment, that's fine. Roxanne's a pretty clean answer to the 2-2. Two -two. And yeah, that's good enough. All right, so we got to see Roxanne in action, got to make plenty of meteorites, and uh, yeah, it's no surprise that this is one of the better brawl commanders out there. The fact that it usually pays for its own commander tax once it comes down means that even if you try to remove Roxanne, it's kind of fighting a losing battle, so you really need either counter spells to stop it, and even there we have a few ways to make it uncounterable, or you need to be able to go over the top or do your own broken thing, which uh, not every deck is capable of. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!